Limiting reagent, which you can also say is limiting reactant, reagent and reactant are the same, is the reactant that runs out in the chemical reaction. We also have something called the excess reagent is the reactant that you have left over at the end of the reaction. So the idea here is that we do not have stoichiometrically equal amounts of the two reactants, okay? It's very rare that we do. Um, for a lot of stoichiometry problems, we just kind of assume that we do um, or assume that the given is automatically the limiting reagent. So now we're going to start to talk about when what happens when you don't know that, which is more akin to a real life scenario where you have two reactants in the lab and you need to figure out which how much product you get and we'll get to that. Okay, so when you figure out the limiting reagent, it is what you use for all of your other stoichiometric calculations. So if you're looking for the amount of product, you use the limiting reagent. That's what's going to determine it because that's what actually you used it all up. You used up all of the moles of that. So here is kind of a real life example of limiting reagent. So if you look here, what we're trying to do our product is the hot dogs and the buns, okay? We have five hot dogs, but only four buns. So if we're making a complete hot dog in a bun, you can see that the limiting reagent, the buns, is going to determine how much product we can make, okay? So we have five hot dogs, but we can only make four hot dogs in buns. All right, so here our limiting reagent is the buns because that determines, that's the one that runs out and it determines how much we yield. And our excess reagent here is the hot dogs because we have some left over at the end. Okay, so you can kind of see here in this example everything I was talking about on the last slide where the limiting reagent then determines all your other stuff and you'll have some leftover excess reagent. Now, this is a really easy example because it's a one-to-one -one ratio and all of that. Um, so we, unfortunately, our stoichiometry isn't going to be quite as easy as the hot dogs. So here are some steps that we're going to use to figure out limiting reagent. You always start with a balanced equation, okay? That's always something you first need to realize. In these problems, you'll have two givens. In the other stoichiometry problems, you would have just had one. So here is how you determine which reactant is the limiting reagent. You convert to moles of each reactant if they're not already in moles. So if you have it in grams, convert to moles. And then divide by the coefficient. This is kind of a little trick, but AP will honor this trick. Divide by the coefficient. And then the lower number is the limiting reactant. Um, one thing that you really need to be careful of is make sure you're looking at moles, okay? Um, on the AP exam, a lot of students will compare grams or grams of product or something. AP does not give credit for that. So you need to be looking at moles. They want to see that you are comparing moles and moles. So here is an example. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is have a balanced equation. And you're going to start to notice that a lot of times on AP problems, you are not given the equation. You are given, you have to translate it. Okay, so again, I think I mentioned this in a couple videos ago, you really need to know how to name compounds or convert to formulas very quickly. So that's something that you should be practicing if you're not very skilled at it just yet. So the first thing I'm going to do is write the equation for magnesium nitride plus water. It's going to form magnesium hydroxide and ammonia. To balance this, you might want to try the little trick that we did um, in another video where we change water to HOH, that might help you. I think that is helpful for balancing. But either way, you don't have to do that. 
you're going to put a 6 here to balance it, a 3 here, and a 2 here. So B, what is the limiting reagent? So what you're going to do is take your two givens, you have 58.1 of magnesium nitride, 20.4 grams of water. So you're going to take your two givens and convert to moles of each of those givens. So for moles of magnesium nitride, we do a quick two-factor stoichiometry problem. Oops. And then we know one, and the molar mass here is 100.9. So that's going to give us Okay, the next thing you do, if you look at our little steps here, you convert to moles and then divide by the coefficient. Coefficient. So our coefficient here for Mg3N2 is just one. Okay, so we can divide by one. And then the number you're going to be comparing is this. We're going to compare that after we do the same thing for water. So for water, we take our given for water, we convert to moles, and that comes out to 1.13 moles of water. And then we need to divide by the coefficient for water. So we go up to our balanced equation, and the coefficient for water is a 6. So that comes out to this. So now the last step in figuring out what the limiting reagent is, is to compare these two numbers. Okay, and again, this is just a little trick. There's no real science behind this. It just works out this way. It's an easier way to do it. So you see, obviously, that 0 0.189 is going to be the smaller number. So that means that H2O is the limiting reagent. And we'll talk about excess reagent in just a minute, but obviously Mg. 3N2 is going to be the excess reagent. So for C, it's asking what mass of each product could you make for C up here in our little example. So the reason it's asking you that is because it wants to know that you know that you're given to find the mass is going to be water because water is the limiting reagent. Okay, so that is the point of C. So what I'm going to do for that is just two mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry problems. So you're going to start for both of, we're going to be going to both products. So it asks the mass of each product. So we're going to find the mass of this product and the mass of this one. So for part C, for both of them, you start with 20.4 grams of water. And then you do your four factor conversion to mass of whatever product you're doing. So I'm going to do magnesium hydroxide first. Okay, and then I plug in my numbers. And that comes out to 33.0 grams of magnesium hydroxide. 
then I would do the same thing for ammonia, NH3. You're going to notice that these, the beginnings of these stoichiometry problems are very similar because you're using the same given. And then here's where we start to change it. So for C, we have two answers, 33.0 grams of magnesium hydroxide and 6.42 grams of NH3 or ammonia. So now let's talk about the excess reactant or the excess reagent. You're going to have two reagents in this problem, two reactants. One is going to be limiting, the other one's going to be excess. So that means it's the part left over at the end, okay? To figure out how much is left over, you would do a stoichiometry problem to determine the moles of the excess reactant that reacted, okay? So you would go from moles of limiting to moles of excess. Very quick, easy um, stoichiometry problem. However, you then need to remember this part, okay? The answer to your stoichiometry problem is going to tell you how much reactant that limiting reactant used up this much. So now you need to go back and subtract to figure out how much is left over. So this is really important. Make sure you're subtracting. You just want to, and that's a big difference between AP and honors chem. You want to think about what these numbers actually mean as you're going through it. Okay, so consider the reaction of phosphoric acid reacting with aluminum to produce aluminum phosphate and hydrogen gas. So the first thing you do is write the balanced equation. So we have phosphoric acid, aluminum, and then that gives us aluminum phosphate and hydrogen gas. We balance it. So for the next one, you're going to do, for part B, you're going to do the same thing that we did. It's just that the other one is going to be the answer because this time it's asking us which reactant is in excess. So you're going to do exactly what we did before where you take each given You convert to moles. And then you divide by the coefficient. So that's why we make sure we have a balanced equation. So this we're going to divide by 2. And so the number we'll use here. And you might notice I'm not putting a label on this number divided by the coefficient because it's not really anything. Um, I mean, it is, I guess, moles half moles, I guess we could say. Um, but it, this is just like I said, this is a trick. This isn't science. So you don't need to have a unit on that. So then I do the same thing for aluminum. And the coefficient for aluminum here is also 2. So I divide by 2. And then I figure out which one is the limiting reactant by comparing these two numbers. OK, so we can see that phosphoric acid is the limiting reactant. 
and you can write LR. But that's not what the question is asking. Okay, the question is asking what reactant is in excess. So that just means the other one. Al is excess reagent. Make sure you always go back and look at what the question is asking. So then for C, how many grams of the excess reactant is left over? Okay, so the first thing you need to do is figure out how many grams, or you can do moles and convert it that way, that's totally fine, um, to figure out how many grams actually reacted. Okay, so to do that, you're going to use your amount of H3PO4, because we know that was all used up. So make sure you're using the moles, okay? Don't worry about the divided thing. So we're going to go to the moles, 0 0.0186 moles. Of phosphoric acid. And we're going to convert to grams of aluminum. So that's going to tell us how many grams of aluminum reacted with our amount of phosphoric acid? So that comes out to 0 0.502 grams of aluminum. And then don't forget, this is, you have to remember to do that subtraction. This is not the answer. The question is asking how much was left over. So you have to take how much you started with. So we started with this many grams of aluminum. We're going to subtract the amount that reacted. And so our answer We don't need to write left over, but I'm doing that just for clarity. Oops. And you can start to see that the difference between honors level stoichiometry and AP level stoichiometry is that 